Hello guys, that's Benji here with another programming tutorial for C++ programming noob to beginners. Uh, I mean, sorry, noob to programmers. And today's lesson is going to be a good one because this is about arrays. Um, that's turn blue. Never mind, that shouldn't turn blue. <laughs> I imagine that's something to do with this compiler. Right. An array of elements or an array of elements is created doing the following. You you type your type name, what type you want the element to be, and give it a name and then you simply place this uh square bracket after it and state how many elements you wish to have in this array. Here I've asked for five elements and what this does on your computer is it asks in the memory to set up five characters all in a row like that. And the array is terminated with a zero. It's a null statement it will always be zero. In fact, I may have got that wrong. Five elements may indicate four characters and a null statement. Uh, citation needed to whether that is five and a null or four and a null. So, uh, yes, setting up an array can be done like that. And there's a few ways to uh, there's a few things to cover. I'm going to go with int to avoid confusion with a topic I'm covering later and I'm going to give it five elements. Now there's two ways I can set up the contents of this integer. I can do it straight away by using an opening curly brace and declaring all of the variables I want and then close curly brace like that. Okay, I imagine that's fine. If I get rid of that, do I get an error? No. If I add one more, do I get an error? I'll just try to find out whether it's... Yeah, it's too many initializers. So, the number inside is the number of elements you are allowed to put inside it. And then it's followed by a null termination, automatically by the compiler. But you don't really need to know that unless you're manipulating the data yourself, which you shouldn't be for most situations. So, I can set up the contents of this array, which contains five integers all lined up next to each other, by typing what I want them to be. I've just called them 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Or I can do it specifically by choosing which element I want to access and changing its value. Right, this is something important you need to know. The first element in an array is accessed with zero. Indexing always starts with zero. So I have five elements here. My maximum, well, all my values will be found in these storage locations. like that. So yeah this is how you access an element the for example the fifth element of the array called var is accessed with square brackets number four. This this is essentially like the variable name itself. Okay so I've mentioned that we can set up arrays by using the square bracket, uh, the curly braces, or by specifically uh, uh, taking single elements. Except there is a special case, which is the character array. I'm going to call this str, and for good reason, the character array can be set up just like any others. I can have my uh, characters in here. By the way, numbers are also characters. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> it's not letting. Me oh, indeed. When 
in this when setting up characters you need to use single quotes and I'm forgetting all of my basic programming so setting up characters you need to use single quotes with the character inside it numbers are all for characters remember they have their own code ASCII code but with a character string you may also set them up using double quotes like that and just typing all of your data in one long line so I can type hello there YouTube here inside of my double quotes notice that I've not actually got a number inside my square bracket if you do not place a number inside your square bracket then your compiler will automatically assign it a maximum size of its first initializing uh, state so here I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19 I've got 19 characters so the compiler reads that I've got 19 characters inside this string and it will automatically set this up to be 19 okay god damn it it's 20 <laughs> because this apparently does not count for the uh, null terminator at the end so this sets up a, a, uh, an array of 20 I can also do this with my uh, ints or doubles or any other types if I leave the inner square bracket empty I can type whatever I like like that this time it says 4 so apparently the curly braces it's equal to what's inside this but if you want a character string it's equal plus 1 so I'm not sure why that is anyway so uh, last lesson was that uh, that's basics of arrays last lesson was about constant types so I'm going to do a constant int here like max size and I'm going to set it to 20 and a clever thing you can do is you can use constant variables to set up your to set up your arrays because anything inside the square brackets must be a constant value that's a big important factor if you're setting up an array using this notation here which is the array name followed by your square brackets with the size inside it this size must be a constant value uh, and I can demonstrate that it must be constant by removing that there and getting an error here the expression must have a constant value there you go simple as so now we have a use for constants or at least another use for constants. I could take this to my global scope and make sure that if I ever use an array, if I ever use an array inside my program, that it can never be above this certain size. I mean that you may see uh, think that that's a bit pointless, but remember every variable you use in your program uses computer's RAM. So sometimes it is making sure certain things don't go above a certain size. Uh, could be very useful indeed now uh, actually I'm going to put that back there const int max size equals 20 uh, also it is standard notation to mark that any constants are in capital letters usually with underscores in the middle but not all the time uh, it's quite often to see them all just written as one word which is really annoying uh, here, uh, um, this exit success is a macro constant defined as zero. I covered macro constants earlier, but I didn't think to mention the exit success. This is defined by Windows or whatever compiler I'm using. Although the compiler I'm using is made by the same people as Windows. So, and now I'm going to show something else really cool so int 
var r, so variable array, of max size equals zero. By the way, you can set up an entire array to be the same as one element by this. So, set up an array, because remember, whenever you declare a variable, it's using memory from a random place on the computer, and it's not doing anything to that memory beforehand. So it's always best to make sure you initialize the data, just to make sure that it's safe to use later on. And I'm going to use a loop, which I hope I demonstrated earlier. And now I'm going to use my max size there. And this is one cool way of setting up, for example, setting up this array, max size, by using a for loop. I could use while, but then I've got to do a few more things manually. So what I'm doing here, in this for loop, I'm setting up a temporary integer called i, which is going to be high to zero. On every loop iteration, I'm going to check if i is less than max size. If it is, I'm going to do the loop again. And after every loop is completed, I'm going to add one to i. So this ranges from 0 to 20, meaning the loop will repeat 20 times and this statement here will constantly keep changing between variable array element 0 equals 0, element 1 equals 1, element 2 equals 2 and so on. It is basically a very short way of writing everything out manually like so I'd have to do that 20 times if I wanted to set them all up or if I could do it in this bit here and write 20 elements out but I'd rather not, I'd rather just put it in a for loop like that there are of course other places where you use constants and arrays and for loops but uh, hopefully this covers the basics of that and I'm hoping that I've covered everything I need to because I sort of came into this completely unprepared as you might have guessed uh, the next lesson is going to be on pointers hopefully and how they will link into arrays very interesting stuff and can also be very confusing so I'm going to start off with just how pointers and references work and then go into how they work with arrays so uh, that's all for now good luck programming and as I always say especially if you're following my tutorials because I think they suck and thanks for watching if you have watched See you later, guys.